this video we'll be talking about anti-epileptic drugs and how anti-epileptic drugs work at a molecular level. In order to understand how these drugs work, we have to first understand what is epilepsy. So epilepsy is a chronic neurological disorder which is characterized by recurrent unprovoked seizures. So these seizures are thought to be abnormal and excessive electrical activities of the brain that leads to temporary disruption of the normal brain function. But why does these seizure occur? Before that, let's quickly look at some of these common symptoms in epilepsy. So it includes contracting and jerking of the muscles, loss of consciousness, then weakness, confused speech, starting, anxiety, etc. So the biological basis of the epilepsy includes the circuit imbalance. Let us understand what is that. So basically inside our brain there are neurons forming neuronal circuit and these neurons in the cortex fires in a specific pattern. This kind of pattern firing is important for information encoding. Now this pattern firing is possible because there are inhibitory and excitatory neuron regulating the exact amount of activity. In this case the red neuron is the inhibitory one and the blue neurons are the excitatory ones. So these kind of interplay between inhibitory and excitatory neuron make sure the activity is not too low or not too high and it is kept in a steady state baseline level. So obviously this particular aspect is abrogated in context of epilepsy. So in epilepsy what happens is there is an excitatory overdrive. Also there could be an underdrive in the inhibitory responses. So either of that can lead to basically epilepsy. So the GABAergic system can fail to inhibit too much excitatory overdrive or there could be more and more glutamate release in the synapses that can lead to the hyperexcitatory changes. There could be focal seizures that means the electrical imbalance is happening only one portion of the brain or there could be generalized seizures which involves the entire brain. Most common is the focal seizures but the generalized seizure is also not uncommon. Now there are many categories of drugs that can block this activity. One category is known as voltage gated sodium channel blockers and these drugs are the following the most common ones and the most popular ones like uh, phenytone, phenytoin, phosphenytoin, then carbamazepine. so th these are very hard to pronounce but carbamazepine, then lamitrogine. So these are difficult to pronounce but all of these drugs belong to the voltage gated sodium channel blocker category. But let us understand how does these work even if they are difficult to pronounce. So all of these basically inhibit the voltage gated sodium channel present in the neurons. So these voltage gated sodium channels are really important to evoke the action potential. In the depolarization state, there is a huge amount of sodium influx inside the neuron. Now, if these drugs inhibit these voltage gated sodium channel, the depolarization can be inhibited. Now, then there are category of drugs known as calcium channel blockers or voltage gated calcium channel blo blockers like ethosuximide and uh, levetiracetam. So basically these category of drugs again known as calcium channel blockers block the voltage gated calcium channel. In the presynaptic terminal voltage gated calcium channel is really important for synaptic release and this synaptic release evokes the postsynaptic uh, activity in the uh, next neuron. So obviously if the calcium channel is blocked then the activity can be tamed down and this is how the category of drugs calcium channel blockers work. Now, in a glutamatergic circuit, the glutamatergic neuron is not the only one. There are also GABAergic interneurons. So, first of all, in the presynaptic terminal, there, in the presynaptic term, terminal, there would be a action potential that is reaching the terminal. This leads to the neurotransmitter release. And in the postsynapse, there would be several glutamate receptors, such as NMDA receptors, such as AMPA receptors. Now, that lead to a cationic influx. So, cation would go in the postsynapse and make the uh, potential more positive. So this potential change might lead to an action potential in the postsynapse. In contrast, there could be GABAergic neuronal terminal also uh, releasing in this particular synapse. So GABAergic uh, uh, neurons release GABA as a neurotransmitter. 
that binds to GABA A and GABA B type receptors. These are voltage. These are basically ligand gated chloride channels. So once GABA is released, it would lead to anion influx in the postsynapse that would reduce the membrane potential and basically reduce the chance of another action potential. So this is how the GABA and uh, NMDA or glutamate interplay in the synapse regulate the gain of a synapse or it controls the synaptic activity. Another point is these aspects can be modulated. Either there could be a high level of GABAergic activity in the synapse that can tame down activity. Also there could be glutamate receptor antagonists that can prevent the glutamate receptor to open all the time. That would also balance the hyperactivity in the synapses. Now there are also category of drugs that you can already understand. So basically there are GABA agonists such as valproic acid, benzodiazepines, uh, vigabatrine and tiagabine. So basically all of these category of drugs increase the GABAergic inhibition in these synapses and thereby decrease the overall circuit activity. Then there are GLUR antagonists. These antagonists include topiramate and felbamate. So all these are actually preventing the postsynaptic glutamate receptors. So these postsynaptic glutamate receptors correspond to higher or uncontrolled activity. If those are blocked, then the activity can be controlled and checked to a baseline level. Just to summarize what we learned, but before that, basically, let me tell you that all these anti-epileptic drugs comes with some sort of like uh, uh, drawbacks or some sort of like uh, side effects. For example, the most common one which is used is valproic acid. This increases GABA levels and also inhibit voltage gated sodium channels, but it has side effects. So vol valproic acid can reduce the high excitability to desired level, but it can be it can be toxic during pregnancy. It, it could be teratogenic. That is why it cannot be used when it is uh, pregnant, uh, when a woman is pregnant and undergoing seizures. So basically, it is used to treat generalized seizures, absent seizures, and bipolar disorder. Also, the category of drugs like uh, sodium channel blockers, like uh, phenyl. Tonin, uh, phenytoin and uh, carbazepamine, uh, carbamazepine. So these drugs, which are again hard to pronounce, all of that has certain amount of uh, maybe liver toxicity. Some might have a different kind of like uh, toxicity which can be evoked in the system. So that is why with a doctor's prescription, this has to be used in a proper way. So let's see what we learned so far. There are. Uh, the gabargic, so there, there are anti-epileptic drugs which can be categorized into four broad categories. Sodium channel blockers, then GABA agonist which alleviate or basically positively regulate the gabargic input in the synapses. Glutamate receptor antagonist which prevent or inhibits the glutamate receptors and the calcium channel blockers. Each of that, these category of drug has their own way of working, but a combination of that can be used based on the physiological situation and underlying disease condition. That is why contacting a particular clinician is really important if you are facing seizures. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.